Welcome back, Chem 241 guys. We're starting a new exam unit on organometallics, and I'm excited to share uh, this new material with you. I think it's exciting and very useful in the real world, and we've got another homework assignment here that I think a lot of you struggled on, and so there's a lot of confusion that we need to clear up because I think um, counting electrons and, and, and knowing your ligands, that's something you're just going to really have to work at. And so let's dive into this together. Hopefully we can clarify some of that, um, you know, uh, confusion or misconceptions and really show you ways to develop some good approaches so that you can build confidence and, and, and be excited to get this stuff right because I think it's hard work, but um, you can do this. And so let me help you. Um, okay, so this first one, right, we're looking at this value of N and what is going on here? Well, I've got a number of carbonyls in. I don't know how many, but what we do want to do is focus on what we what we what we have that's given to us that we can decipher. And so, one thing I think you need to pull from the notes is that typically for organometallic complexes, we're looking at the 18 electron rule. 18 electron rule is going to be kind of our version of the octet rule for transition metals, right? And so, back in 111, we talked about things being stable because they had um, valence electron configurations that matched or were isoelectronic to the noble gases and so uh, transition metals this is very similar we're, instead of eight electrons with P and S orbitals we're going to talk about 18 electrons because now we've got S, P and D electrons and so for organometallics 18 is kind of the sweet spot especially for an octahedron and so let's go ahead and dive into this one so the first thing I can tell is that I don't know the charge on the metal However, I do know that the charge on the complex is a negative one. So this is an anion, very good. Carbonyl, if you remember, carbonyl does not have a charge. However, it brings two electrons to the party. And why is that? Well, if we review real quickly, if you draw the Lewis structure, right, for a carbonyl ligand, the two electrons on the carbon bond and form that coordinate covalent bond. So this is neutral, but it brings in two electrons. So we can count that as two electrons. The next one is hydride. And hydride confused many of you. So if you look at hydride, hydrogen neutral has one electron. One electron is not going to be very helpful. So we need to bring in another electron so we can form a bond. If we bring in one electron, you guessed it, it makes that negative. So two times negative one means that this combination is going to be negative two. Methyl does the same thing, right? So this alkyl group, if we just had that by itself, that's fine, but we need to bring another electron so it can bind to the metal. That's going to make that a negative charge. So two times negative one, that means both of those give you a negative two. Okay. We now know that carbonyl is neutral, no charge there. Negative two, negative two equals negative four, we have one left over, which means then that the iridium is a positive three, and that's really important. So, now we can begin to think about what we're gonna add up here. If we know iridium is a, neg a positive three, excuse me, we know that's in the same column as cobalt, and cobalt has nine valence electrons, as does iridium, minus three, because it's a cation, that's gonna give us what, you, you got it, six electrons from the metal, Carbonyl, we don't know, right? We don't know how many are there, but we do know it brings two. So we're just going to call that 2N, bringing that down here. We know that we have, what, two hydride. Each hydride brings two, so that's going to give you four electrons. And then finally, the methyl here is also, each of those brings you two. There are two of those, so that's four electrons. And we'd like to probably shoot for something like 18 electrons using the 18 electron rule. So now if you look at that, 6 plus 4, right, is 10, it's 14, when you get 4 more, that means, what, 14 plus 2n equals 18, which means then that n equals 2. Pretty simple. And if you look, 2 methyls, 2 hydrides, 2 carbonyls, that's an octahedron. There you go, 18 electron rule. So let's go ahead and draw this, right? I'm going to go ahead and put my iridium here. I'm going to go ahead and give me a plus 3 on that. I'm going to put... I like to draw four in the plane of the paper, one uh, maybe in front, one behind, however you want to do that. And then again, I didn't tell you, in fact, I'll go ahead and shade that in a little bit. Again, you know, you can kind of think about how you want to do that, but you got to show three dimensions. So um, let's see, We I didn't tell you if it was cis or trans, it doesn't matter. So let's just go ahead and just put them randomly around. I just picked hydrides first. Please make sure you're drawing, this is a pet peeve of mine. 
if you you've got to tell me which atom is actually bound so actually draw the atom that's bound to the metal connected to the metal so for example carbon monoxide is like that you don't put the oxygen there and you, you don't you know you don't just put CO you need to show me what's actually bound and that's the carbon and then remember don't forget you got a negative here a negative here a negative here and a negative here neutral neutral plus three that means you have a residual charge right and that's shown here that's important to show that structure that that one is a negative one really important you gotta show all of that really important if you want to get full credit alright next one this problem confused so many of you uh, and that's because I think you're just you haven't gotten the hang of it there are lots of examples in the book um, you know, I gave you a number of ligands. I think there were 10 ligands that you have to know now. And so it's not that tough. So let's just dive right in and, and clear up this confusion. So again, we approach this similar to the way we did it up above. I'm going to say that this carbonyl, right, is neutral. It brings two electrons. This carbonyl is neutral. It brings two electrons. And now, whoa, what is, what is this? And a lot of you were kind of freaked out by that ligand. Uh, we've seen this ligand before. This is a pi allele ligand, right? That's really important. You have to know it. The neat thing about this ligand, it's bidentate, as you can tell, but it's different, right? It's not symmetrical if you draw this version of the resonance structure. So if you look at this end, this end is just showing you that there's a sigma bond connecting the carbons, and then there's a double bond. That double bond has two electrons that can be donated to palladium, and that's how it binds. That's why it's drawn kind of side on here. Now, you need to be careful because this side, if it were to pop off, would just be a pi bond. No big deal. That would be a neutral compound. Just like if you broke off carbonyl, it would be carbon monoxide and it would be a neutral compound. So this end of the molecule is neutral and it brings two electrons from that pi bond. Over here is a different story. CH2 should remind you like up above CH3. So this is a, a alkyl or a carbon fragment that if you pulled this off, carbon would only have one, two, three bonds and you'd be missing something. And if you're missing something, that's a good indicator that it's gonna be a negative ligand. And so again, two electrons, right? So if you had two electrons here, binding there, if you pulled that off, these two electrons would give you a negative formal charge. You can do the Lewis structure. There's no need to be confused. I know these are new things, but you know, either you can count to four or you can do the actual formal charge and show that this would be an anion. And so this bidentate ligand, this pi allele, has one side that's anionic over here and one side that's neutral. And you need to kind of, you know, make sure you can figure that out. All right, so here we look at the palladium. I've got neutral, 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 negative. This whole thing is neutral, which means palladium has to be a one plus. So I'll say one plus for the palladium. The electron count, okay. Well, if I have palladium that's a one plus, I look at palladium on the periodic table, that's in the nickel family, and that has 10 valence electrons minus one for the cation, so that means it's nine electrons from the metal, plus two, four, six, eight, four ligands times two, right? That's gonna be eight electrons. Well, that's simple, that's simply 17 electrons. 17 electrons, there you go, not so difficult. Now remember you might be saying, oh, but what about the 18 electron rule? Well, that's true that most stable complexes will have 18 electrons are very close. That doesn't mean all of them are gonna be 18. You have to count and actually do the work. So this would be a 17 electron complex. It might want to gain an electron, but as counted, it's 17 electrons, there you go. And then finally, we already said that is a pi allele ligand. You just have to know that. There are only 10 of them, make some flashcards. Whatever you gotta do, you can figure it out. Now this guy over here, that is, right, an alkyne, right? Alkyne, right, that's pretty easy. And this looks an awful lot like an alkene as part of that pi allele. If you pop this one off, you would have the gas known as acetylene. You can go buy that in a, a bottle and use it to weld. It would be a neutral compound. So this would be neutral ligand. Again, two electrons coming from one of those pi bonds, and so that would be a two electron donor. Carbonyl, we should know by now, is neutral, two electrons. Carbonyl is neutral, two electrons. By now, I think you're catching that hydride is gonna be anionic, two electrons. Chloro, we've known that for a long time. That's a negative charge, right, from exam one. So there we go. 
And now if we look at that, I count one neutral, two neutral, three neutral, don't worry about those, but one, two, three anionic, if the whole thing is neutral, then this osmium is gonna be a three plus. So there we go, there's a three plus. The complex electron count, well I look at osmium, osmium is uh, in the, the iron family, right? So it's, it's eight electrons minus three, so it's gonna be five electrons from the osmium plus what? One, two, three, four, five, six times two, that's what? That's 12 electrons from the ligands, which means uh, just by coincidence, we get 17 again. And then finally, the, the type of ligand that's pointed to, again, was the alkyne, right? You could also say acetylene, that's perfectly fine. Remember, alkynes are short for three, alkenes would be two. So there you go, not too bad. All right, this is pretty quick. We're almost done with this homework assignment. Let's power on through one more and we can call it a day. Um, so this is a really neat complex, right? Cobaltocene is a type of metallocene dealing with the CP ligand, right? The cyclopentadienyl anion. It's worth maybe drawing over here that this would be C5H5. And remember, this is anionic, right? So if I were to draw this, um, and I'll draw it down here maybe, you know, you draw this guy as a five-membered ring, like that. Um, if you want to, you can draw the carbons in, right? There you go. You put those carbons in there if you don't like drawing it the shorthand way. And then what we typically do is since this, those double bonds are uh, resonance delocalized around that whole ring, we just put a little circle to show that, that, that those double bonds are pretty much delocalized and spread across all five carbons. But please remember that this whole thing is a negative charge, and that's really important. So when we draw this as a structure, if there are two of these, right, and there are, in this case, two of those, the whole thing's neutral, that means what the cobalt has to be a two plus. So now we can draw it, we can say, okay, we'll draw this around. And there's our five carbon ring. Now, if you want to, you're happy to leave it like that. I, I can understand what that looks like, but many times I'll ask you to draw the whole thing, right? So. It's important to know that there are some hydrogens on there because we can actually do some cool chemistry later on on those hydrogens. We're going to bind this in a linear fashion, right, to cobalt 2 plus. And we're going to have the other um, CP ligand down here. I'll go ahead and draw that CH, 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 CH. There you go. Pretty simple. Before we move on, let's go ahead and do a couple things. Uh, this cobalt 2 plus, remember that cobalt is uh, nine valence electrons minus two, that would be a seven electron metal. This one, remember, you have one, two, three, four, five carbons that are roughly sp2 hybridized, right? They're gonna have one p orbital left, which means each of those has a p electron, and then you have one electron from the anion, so that means it's gonna be a six electron donor, kind of cool there. This one's the same, six electrons, so six plus six is 12, plus seven, right, if you look at that. That means this complex is a 19 electron complex. Pretty neat, okay. We can do a crystal field diagram here. Remember when this ligand ring comes down, it's gonna hit, uh, if we call this the, the Z axis in this direction, we bring that ligand down, it's gonna hit those D orbitals that have what? Yeah, you guessed it, some Z component. So XZ and the YZ are gonna get hit first, drive them way up in energy. What orbital also has Z? Well, you named it the DZ squared. And then finally, the ones that have no Z component, XY and the X squared minus Y squared, right? The ones that live in the XY plane. And then our delta, as we talked about in class, is right here. If we know that cobalt has seven electrons, one, two, three, don't jump, four, five, six, we're all filled. Now we have to go up here. That's what the splitting diagram looks like. We've got one electron that does not have a partner. That's all it takes to make you paramagnetic. And then finally, if you think about it, if you're 19 electrons, wouldn't you like to lose one electron to come back down to 18 and be a little bit more stable? Well, I would love that. That'd be great. That'd be energetically favorable. So here we would say we'd rather lose one electron, take us to 18 electrons. If that's the case, remember oxidation is lost, right? So we lost an electron, we're being oxidized, right? Remember that oil rig? Oxidation is lost, reduction is gained. So if we are being oxidized, 
we are a reducing agent. So there you go. Pretty simple. I think I hope I hope this clarifies a little bit of the the confusion on electron counting, ligand counting, oxidation determination, um, and this will help you feel a little bit more confident and being able and get you ready to take on uh, some more challenging and a lot more exciting and fun applications that we'll cover in class. So anyway, I hope this helps. I'll talk to you in class.